My name is Danny Anderson and I'm the fundraising manager for Support Dogs. Support Dogs is based in Sheffield, just around the corner from Meadow Hall. Can you tell us a little bit about the work of Support Dogs? Okay, sure. So Support Dogs has been going for oh, about 28 years. We're a national charity, but we're entirely based here in Sheffield. And uh, we're an assistance dog charity, so we train dogs to make people's lives safer and better. So we have three main programmes. We train dogs for people with epilepsy to give a warning before they have a seizure. We train dogs for children with autism to help make life safer and better for them. And we help train dogs for people with a wide range of physical disabilities like MS, cerebral palsy, anything really where there's a physical uh, disability. It sounds very demanding for a dog. What kind, what the training entail? Well, it all depends on the programme you're doing. So for our epilepsy programme, we train dogs to give a warning, up to an hour warning before you have an epileptic seizure. So if we had one trained for you and it picked up at 32 minutes, then for you it will always be 32 minutes, not 35 minutes, not 20 minutes. It's always the same amount of time and it's 100% reliable and never ever misses a seizure. So for that we're looking for the dogs who've got that real sort of people watching skills and uh, really observant dogs, really people focused dogs. For our autism programme we're looking for dogs who are really slow, really calm, really plodding so child who struggles to leave the house and places like supermarkets where there's lots of sounds and lots of lights. That's really overwhelming for them. The dogs there will keep them calm and sturdy and just really be that, that sort of focus and um, yeah and help keep that child safe. For the disability programs we want dogs who will get you undressed, go and fetch your medication, unload your washing machine, pick up anything you drop, go and fetch your crutches, all sorts of day-to-day -day tasks. And we're looking for dogs there which are really busy, really like doing things, really like playing. Um, so it's looking for those right dogs, for those right situations, they're matching up and helping develop their, their skills. The dogs that support people with epilepsy, how do they know? We don't know exactly, no, we're still still going to do more research on it. So we've been doing it for the best part of 20 years. Um, we know we believe it's a physiological change in the, the body that dogs are picking up and it's got to be consistent, so it's got to be every single time. It might be a smell involved, but it might be also some sort of a physiological change from body temperature to behaviour to blood pressure. Um, we're working at moments moment with a um, university in Belgium to do more research on it, but yeah, there's still lots more research to be done on it. Mm -hmm. the, the dogs that work with people with autism, that must be life-changing. Oh, it is, not just for that child, but for, for that wider family. So I said we look for really, really calm dogs, but the main reason why families contact us for that programme is they're worried about their, their child's safety. So when that child goes outside and they've got no sense of danger at all, or if they, the lights and noise are just completely overwhelming, they would run and bolt and maybe step into traffic, it's, you know, just or just run away, which is absolutely terrifying, as you can imagine, as a, as a parent. So the dogs are usually attached around, uh, attached to that child, so they will block and stop and stop that child basically move from doing that but then help that child to no longer need it because they've got this beautiful, soft, slow, ploddy, portable safe place with them and their focus isn't on anything, it's on that, that dog. And that, that safety aspect, we also find how the dogs help that child develop with social interaction, with language, with sleep, and sleep is such an important thing for everyone, isn't it? So if that child may struggle to sleep at night while that dog is staying in the room with them, that child's able to relax and get more sleep, which means the parents get more sleep, which means everyone's lives are, are much better. But yeah. Fantastic. And the dogs that work with people with physical disabilities, again, that must be really life-changing. Yeah, so, you know, our dogs do a whole lots of, I guess, clever clever tricks almost, from, you know, loading your washing machine, getting you undressed, um, fetching your medication, getting help, picking up the phone, all sorts of clever things like that. But what they really do is about give that person's confidence back and their independence. And that's confidence to be on their own at home, to leave the house on their own, for their family to leave them, you know, so they can return to work or return to education, for them to leave the house and know they're going to be okay. We also talk about a lot about isolation for people with disabilities and how isolating it can be. Um, but you've got a dog with you and you walk into a supermarket and that dog's taking down the cornflake packets and put it in your basket then people ask you and start conversations with you and recognize you and you become much more part of that community um so yeah it's really important mm, fantastic they're very special dogs aren't they yeah. how long does the training take it depends on a dog and depends on a person but we say on average about two years um so that's working with a young puppy and then build them up and then they stop 
so we usually get um when we're working with puppies you get them from about eight weeks old and um when they reach about 14 months old they start big school and then at big school we you know do general training and then we focus on what what program they, they seem best suited to we start training specifically towards that program and then it's about that tailored individual training for for that that client agree match with so you know a client might live in a city and have a big family or they might live in the loan and own and live in the countryside and it's you know that dog's going to match that 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 whole lifestyle and that person really it's not just about here's an autism dog or here's an epilepsy dog here's your dog which is right for you